Plugged in, polarized, fist raised in anger, staring down, don't meet the eye. Everyone's a stranger, a thousand tunes ringing in my ear, no time for conversation. A thousand channels wide to my brain, no thought, just sensation. Don't look at me, can't you see? I don't want to talk to you. I'm plugged into the world, I'm wired. Wired but disconnected Wired but disconnected I've seen the world through my screen I've traveled it with my fingers There's no need to touch or feel Cause nothing here is real You may be tall, I may be short But that's just reality I am as I want to be And that's virtuality For years I tried to find the perfect opportunity to use one of my favorite quotes from one of my favorite movies ever called Network. Now if you've seen it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So how's the hair? Hair is good? Good. Yeah, no, I got the, the haircut. It gets uh, pretty fucking hot in the city there, so it's better, uh, it's better short than walking around with a thick mop of fucking, uh, you know, long thick hair. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like totally nerding out right now. Yeah. Star Trek? Yeah, I love Star Trek. Uh, that's uh, the first movie, not the uh, Into Darkness one. Yeah. Anyway, um, so this is me, and that is the year I was hatched. Now this, that would be my dash separating the year of my birth and to my death, whenever that is. Now we don't know when that is, but the interesting part is the dash, is the, the line in the middle. That line is not just a dash. That line signifies your whole life. Every time I walk into a cemetery, I, I, I walk around, I look at tombstones, and I look at the person's dash, because that's their entire life. And it's how did they live that dash, right? How, how they lived their life. It's the most important part of the tombstone is that little dash. So for me, uh, it got pretty interesting sometimes, uh, a couple of, uh, really really weird situations uh most people would call my life pretty boring though you know in fact um no it's true um it like it started with um well some a lot of the interesting situations in, involve women uh uh one one girl i met she uh the, the very first night i talked to her she said she said oh well you, you totally should have an ego i said well i don't have an ego oh but you totally should well, she, she ended up blocking me, and in one of, like, the messages... I am your slave. You are the love of my life. You are my king. These are her words, not mine. Many, many times I tell, I tell women not to call me special unless you know why I am. And she did. <laughs> and then you get all this fucking shit. Well, something interesting happened the other day. Uh, here I am. Uh... Yeah, with the feet. I got this little light here. It keeps me safe while I'm biking at night. Anyway, a couple days ago, one of my uh, ex-friends, I'll call her my ex-friend, wrote this to me. Okay? Okay, I just wanted to check on you and see how you were doing. I'm glad you are better. The reason she says that because my back was really fucked. My back still hurts, so, you know, I'm suffering from my arch. So, I hope it's appreciated. Okay, I wanted to say goodbye to you. I have tried numerous times to talk with you, but you never seem interested anymore and you never make an attempt to talk to me or have a conversation. So that shows me you don't care and I want, I, well sorry. And I can't waste my time worried about you and missing you and attempting to conversate with you when you never care to ask, ask me or act like you care. So I am just going to bow down gracefully and leave you be. Then I wrote, uh, you realize I don't know your work schedule, right? Oh well, I'm not going to complain. So she works at Popeye's Chicken, which I'm happy to say I'm boycotting Popeye's Chicken now. Just because she works there, she might fuck up the whole corporation. Okay? Yeah. Alright? 
you realize I don't know your work schedule, right? Oh, well, I'm not going to complain. Then she writes, because you don't ask, and of course, why would you complain when you don't even care? Then I said, well, if all I did was talk to people, I'd never get anything done. You totally have the wrong idea about me. Then she writes, perks of you being self-centered, like only you matter. Actually, she wrote matters, but we won't fault her for that one. And only what's going on in your life and with you. Sorry, I don't need, want, or have time for a one-way friendship. I'm tired of wasting my time trying to be trying to be friends with you. I've learned not to waste my time on someone that doesn't care about me. And like you are so busy doing a bunch of nothing, but living in internet land all your life. I live in the internet land, you're a fucking phone whore. Okay, you can live without your fucking phone. You think the world revolves around you, newsflash, it doesn't and never will block. In capital letters, so, you know, aren't we mature? Anyway, so right there, I, I don't like somebody using something against me. In Chronicles 1, I talked about my one-sided friendship with uh, a friend I had for 25 years. Okay, I knew this girl since January. Like, let's just fucking calm down a bit, okay? And it was hellish. It was required of me to speak to this girl every night for a minimum of four hours. She got pissed off if I missed a night. Okay, she got mad. So I was the one who had to talk to her, so I was the one taking the fucking night guy. That's my life. A bunch of strange little adventures, you know, really, uh, dream kind of logic follows the rules of dream. Kind of like this. <laughs>
I kind of liked it back in the day, but I remember the first time I ever saw it. Like, the movie was such a fucking, a, a powerful experience, especially at the end. Especially at the end. And Roy is there, and he, he does his, his last monologue there, the sea beams and, and all that stuff, and the, the tears and rain, his memories. Really, really beautiful stuff. Then he dies. Then the next thing you got is this fucking... The, the, the voiceover, uh, Deckard's voiceover, is like, I don't know why he said what he, you know, it just ruined the whole experience, like, because right after that, it, it's like, it, it's really, no, it was such a, like, a powerful experience, um, and then it's just this really ridiculous voiceover, like, you know, right, a, right after this really powerful scene, and uh, many years later, I watched uh, the uh, the final cut, which it was amazing, I think. And uh, and Frank Darabont, the director of uh, Shawshank Redemption and Green Mile, all that stuff, he, he says, uh, and here comes cracking in this dunder-headed vo- voiceover, you know, about the, you know, and he's like, oh, thank you, you know, that's, ex- and I pointed to all my, you know, to like my brother, I said, I said the same fucking thing years ago. Yeah, it was just a really, really fantastic movie. Um, no, there, there's so many things about it. Uh, for, for me, it's like we, we are the replicants. That's us. That's all of us. And the, the cops are like all manner of, uh, you know, government uh, law enforcement, like CIA, FBI. You know, they're, the cops represent all those things in those movies. But we are the replicants, okay? And then at the end, you finally, you finally have you finally have a confrontation with a replicant, which is one of us, and he, he meets, he finally meets his maker, you know, Tyrell, Dr. Tyrell, and comes up and says, I want more life, fucker, right? And isn't that what, we should all be asking that, because we, we really don't get a lot of time, we should all be asking it. I know Blade Runner is such a fucking powerful experience for me, like that, that movie changed my entire world. Uh, I'm not even going to talk about the, 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 the way the city looks, the, you know, the constant thick, oily rain, nothing like that, because I'm just going to leave it like that, but you ask about a sequel or a prequel, uh, a sequel would be a bad idea, I think, a sequel, however, would be amazing, I think, to, to show Roy and, you know, uh, the, the other replicants, uh, how, you know, what they did, what they did for the humans and all this stuff, you know, and it'd be nice to actually see what, what Roy talks about at the end of Blade Runner, because it's just amazing. It's it's probably one of my most favorite uh, moments in movie history, is that last scene. Yeah, it's just a really profound experience. Uh, so I think a sequel would be a bad idea, but a prequel, a prequel I think could work, you know, because you can't do a sequel, because with, you know, I, I prefer the, amb- the ambivalence of it. Um, you know, because we don't we don't know if uh, if Deckard is going to die. We don't know how long they're going to last, or the girl. We don't know. So, uh, really amazing, amazing movie. Yeah, I fucking love Blade Runner. Yeah, thanks for the question. Um, yeah, no, there's a lot of stuff like a, a lot of uh, a lot of the, the problems with women. Uh, I, I thought it was a I thought it was a waste of time. Like a, you know, really like a situation like that. Uh, it's just. I don't know. It it's just you. Where where do you? Yeah. Okay. Granted, I I give her props. You know, I give her props. I, like she was there too, but you know, she she spent the time with me too. But the, that's not the thing. Like the thing is, I got the shitty end of the deal because I had to deal with the depressed piece of shit. Okay. Like th- this was me. Like oh yeah, just rants, rants, and we we always talked with like a, a there was always a delay on Skype because she was on the cell phone, I was on computer, and it was very weird. Like sometimes she would go for twenty minutes, right, and you can't like interject in there at all, so it becomes really difficult. But it's all about how are you gonna live your dash? You know, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do different to distinguish yourself? Uh, that's one of the things. Like I said before. Uh, there's, there's a lot of people who would consider my life kind of boring, but I have been, you know, I, I have been involved in some really 
interesting situations and some some pretty cool moments actually you know this is this is the truth yeah shit the 90s uh the 90s were really fun it's like uh whoa you know uh because my my dad had met uh, this woman and then he started staying at her place like all the time so me and my brother we, we had the whole place to ourselves and then we ended up renting the house from my dad and so you know no no parents no nothing so people came over all the fucking time a lot of fucking scattered ass but sometimes it, it was like the whole 90s the whole decade was just fucking crazy it was kind of like like this here Yeah, that's that's a that's pretty much accurate. Uh, just trying to keep people like we had to hide sometimes, you know, like from from fucking people coming over. Like just fucking, uh, we we would hear people knock and, okay, you know, just dive right to the fucking kitchen floor, you know, just to just to avoid them. No, nobody's home, you know. Fuck off, you know. <laughs> um, uh, my 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 school years weren't good at all. Um, with the the whole bullying thing. Haven't we all had an, had about enough of the uh, fucking bullying that goes on? Um, I, I like I've I've always been really concerned with the thousands and thousands of kids who you know just daily daily uh, are fucking bullied into like, so bad so bad they end up you know they end up killing themselves because these people don't give them a way out. They are completely deprived of any self worth. Uh, they're made to, to feel like their ideas don't matter. For me, for me it started in, uh, oh, before high school. There, there was a, an incident that uh, there was a school trip at the Sportsman's Lodge and like a rumor started there. High school was fucking brutal. Um, ever since high school started for me, it was like, uh, it wasn't really the same people who bullied me. It was a it was a whole new group of people now. Uh, the jo the jocks, the fucking uh, you know, just fucking losers. Uh, I didn't have many friends. Uh, that's the way I kind of liked it. it. That's just my way. I had my own ideas. I didn't think uh, you know. I didn't think I should do 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 things the way that uh, most of the other people did them. Uh, you know, I thought that was pretty fucking uh, ridiculous. And I always figured, you know what, there's got to be a fucking better way. But no, it, it happened like daily, daily to the point where, you know, sometimes I was I was walking through hallways punching a fucking brick wall, you know, be, just out of anger. And just on a daily basis. Um, and I only had a couple ways out. So either... And I was fucking sad. I used to go home and fucking, you know, cry my eyes out, you know. Uh, and at the same time, I, did, I didn't think, uh, you know, I thought, why does any of this matter? You know, like, who cares what anybody else thinks? But it's the, the way they do it, right? It's the way they do it. They completely take away everything that you are and that you want to be. You know, that's, that's fucking bullying. And it's done with... It's done with a certain fucking technique, right? Where it completely makes you makes you feel utterly useless. Um, no, I had a couple ways out. Uh, one of them was, you know, I would just fucking off myself, and you know, I wouldn't have to go back to school anymore. Uh, the other way was, uh, you know, quitting school, and the other way was trying to finish high school and uh, just be fucking completely miserable. I chose I chose the second way, uh, and I quit school. So I never finished high school. But I'm happy to say that uh, as of May 15th of 2013, I am officially a high school graduate. So better late than never. But no, I I've always been a champion for the um, for the ones who were who for the ones who get bullied. You know, it's always been my thing. Um, like I think, you know, the shit has got to fucking stop. You know, it's it's got to stop. Like it is fucking out of control. Like how fucking dare anybody, 
make anybody think that there's no other way out but to take your own fucking life. So the, these kids who could have grown up and, you know, these are the ones who, who could have cured cancer or fucking did all sorts of stuff, you know, or like the, these young these young girls, like Miss Todd. This is a girl who, she'll, she'll never get married. Her dad will never be able to walk her down the aisle. Nothing. Just for a fucking... You know, just for a fucking, a little mistake, when you really think about it, like, what kid hasn't done that? I mean, you know, you're on webcam and all this stuff. I mean, who hasn't done that? But no, she was so fucking, like, you know, outcast just for doing that. I mean, and and the, the people who fucking, the people who fucking bullied her were probably ten times fucking worse, you know? She was probably getting bullied, like all the girls who bullied her were probably all the fucking whores of the school. But how fucking dare you, you know, make somebody think that there's no other way out but to fucking kill themselves. Like, it's, it's out of control, the fucking shit has to stop. I mean, where is the fucking human compassion, you know? Like, where, where is just the fucking common decency, right? Like it fucking it it really bothers me. Like it's that's a story, that's a story. Like uh, late last year, it it fucking it literally broke my heart. No, it has to stop. It has to stop. Like no, there's thousands of kids, thousands and thousands of kids that go home every day, and you know they 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 feel like they can't talk to their parents about it. They, they you know they 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 basically isolate themselves fucking in a room, you know, cry their eyes out, and they're fucking, like, they're, they're just sinking deeper and deeper into fucking depression, uh, just because of these fucking cocksuckers, like, it has to stop, it has to fucking stop, you know, I'm not, like, I'm, I'm sitting here talking, like, I can't, you know, uh, I mean, I, I can't stop it by, by talking about it, but the thing is, I could do what she did, just, just, inform people that there is another way there is another way even though she chose you know she chose the the, the, the most difficult path and afterwards she was called a coward because of it like really fucking think about it okay all the the people out there and if if some of you who are watching this uh if some of you are the ones who fucking bullied her really think about it you call her a coward think about the strength of will it takes to take your own fucking life think about it so let's just try to be a little fucking nicer to each other you know yeah rest well amanda It, st it started, yeah, it started with a whole thing, a school trip, Swarthson's Lodge, mentioned before. And the whole thing was, because uh, the boys were upstairs, girls were downstairs, right? So you can, you can intermingle. So the boys had to be in rooms with boys and all like that. And so I was in the room with uh, my friend James, uh, at the time, good friends. And then a whole rumor started with that, that me and James had, you know, like fucked each other, right? And we always thought that was pretty laughable. And for years, people still believed it. And it's like, no, seriously. And I tell people all the time, you know what? Like, it would have actually, that would have been cool had that actually happened. Like, I mean, because it's like, other than the trip was fucking boring. Like, it was a really boring school trip. So that probably would have been a lot better. Um, then, not so good. Uh, 
me and my buddy Jason, uh, this is the one I talked about before. We used to, uh, in high school, we used to go, um, we used to go smoke in the, the boys' room. I think there's a song in there somewhere, right? We used to go have cigarettes, you know, in the, in the, the boys' room there upstairs. And uh, this was for gym class, right? Because, you know, everybody was in the class and then we went upstairs and, okay, uh, had our cigarettes. And then we came down and, and then the, the teacher, the, te the gym teacher had caught wind of this, that, that we were up there in the bathroom like together. He didn't know we were smoking, but he made a joke in front of the whole class that we were basically like bum buddies, right? Like basically fucking each other up there. And that stuck, like that one stuck. So uh, let me tell you, let me tell you, for all the, the kids out there um, who have a, uh, difficulty with uh, bullies and stuff like that don't talk to teachers okay I'm telling you right now don't talk to fucking teachers they could care less they could fucking care less for them it's a paycheck they don't care talk to your parents talk to your friends if you can't do that there's there's plenty of phone numbers you could call they, they'll help you don't talk to teachers they won't do fuck all trust me I know um, the rest of high school until I until I gave it up uh, was a complete fucking uh, just the, the, the couple of wrestlers, you know, they, they would, I mean, cause I, like at the time in high school, I started, uh, you started noticing uh, the little, uh, the little strange gate in my walk. So they would, they would sort of mock, mock that, right? Walk beside me and mock me, you know, just kind of imitate the way I was walking. And, uh, like, that pissed me off. Like, it fucking pissed me off. I mean, I can't, I can't fucking tell you, like, how bad it pissed me off. But then there was worse. It just got worse. It just got almost fucking really, really bad. Like, uh, I mean, there were, there were times, okay, school was over. I was walking home. Anybody who, uh, who uh, grew up in the valley in Hanmer will, will know what I'm talking about. You know, we would cut across the road and through the, through the bush there, through the trail up into the Farmdale subdivision. Everybody who's from there, you know, okay? As I'm walking down the road, like this is my time, okay? This is my fucking time. School is over, all right? I just wanna get home. I'm walking home and then I hear a fucking vehicle behind me, okay, C coming beside me. And then sure enough, next thing I know, a fucking big gob of spit like right on the side of my fucking face. It was those two fucking bastards, right? The same two fucking cocksuckers who, who would make fun of me in school and stuff. I mean, this is my time. Like, this is outside. Okay? Like, this is fucking outside. Like, that, after that, uh, like, within a, a week and a half after that, it's like I, I, I just missed most of the days after. And then the vice principal took me in the office one day when I did show up. And he just, uh, you know, he just called me into his office and shook my hand and kicked me out of school. You know? And he said, well, school's not for you and all this stuff. Yeah, you don't know why school's not for me. Because even if I told you, you wouldn't do fuck all about it. So to all the kids out there who have a problem with bullies, do not talk to fucking teachers. Do not talk to the fucking principals. They won't do a fucking thing. Talk to your parents. Talk to your friends. Okay, if you can't do that, call, call any of the many numbers that, that you can and they'll help you. Do not talk to teachers if you're being bullied. It's not going to work. They, they could not fucking care less. So that was high school. No, it was nice when I quit. Uh, you know, when uh, you know all your time becomes your own and then you start living your dash, you know? But it becomes interesting be, now, like you don't have, I don't have the, the money to, to buy certain things. I can't really, you know, so it becomes difficult, but you, you, you know, you do what you can, little projects, you know, wrote a lot. And uh, to be honest, most of this, the stuff I've, I've written in my life, nobody will ever see it. Like, nobody will ever see it. Uh, it will only be released, uh, like, sometime after I'm dead. It's, it's going to be, yeah, like, all the stuff I've ever written, like, there's probably, there's well over a million words in there somewhere. Um, but all the stuff I've ever written, like, uh, after my death, it's all going to be released to public domain. So that's, that's going to be my gift, you know to the world so there's like there's probably like 500 poems uh, which have never been shared with anybody uh, like 500 poems there's a bunch of short stories in there uh, there's, there's some other um, there's like simpler stuff there's like 
uh, treatments for, for movie ideas, you know, different, different stuff. So all that's gonna, it's all gonna be yours, you know? And now to something completely different. We were walking in the city there and we, uh, me and uh, Miss Emily Price came on to this. It's right in front of a college, Regis College. There's this little Grim Reaper thing laying on a bench. Yeah, it's made out of, uh, I think, tin. It's pretty interesting. What do you think of that? Pretty fucking creepy? Very creepy. Very, Very creepy. creepy. It's pretty disturbing. It's pretty disturbing, like, to, to have that right in front of a college like that, yeah. And this is right on uh, Wellesley Street here. Queen's Park is down that way, and yeah, right here, as you can see, that's, yeah, pretty disturbing. Yeah, so I just went down this slide here, right over there, and holy shit. Okay, because a week and a week, yeah, like last Saturday I threw my back out. I was all the way down to Woodbine Beach. My back went out on me. I had to bike all the way back. That's like 15 kilometers, okay? Like, it was fucking crazy. So I made it back, pain. I, I spent uh, like a week sitting on the couch. I watched pretty much all of uh, Deep Space Nine. That's how, yeah, like, you know, go on. And uh, so I'm here with uh, Miss Emily Price, and she's talking into going down. There we go. She talked me into going down the slide here, and it's got this really nasty bump at the end. It just hit me right on the goddamn tailbone. Man. So, yeah. Now I gotta. We gotta bike back home now. So you know we're like we're fucking downtown here. So uh, we'll see. So it's not bad. I had a little trouble walking afterwards. It was a little bit iffy. Oh yeah. By the way, look at this. Look at this chair. It's like, King in the castle, king in the castle. What was I saying? Um, but no, I've tried, like I, I've tried to, you know, live my dash and, and, you know, balance it out with interesting experiences and, uh, you know, fun moments. I, I think I, I did okay, I, I, you know, there there's always some things you could do better, like naturally. Uh, but that's just the way it is. Like sometimes it's it's just a situation thing where you, you can't do it. Like and money plays a plays a big part in that. But uh, anybody who knows me, they know like I love to like beyond all things. I mean, I love to ride my bike. That's what I do. I I love to ride my bicycle, and I will do it for as long as I can. Yeah, uh, you know, live your dash, make it count. You know, because we don't we don't really when you think about it, we don't really get that much time. And it's, it's like every day, every day I sit, I'm sitting there writing, or, you know, I'm working on something or, or editing, whatever, which unfortunately I haven't been doing a lot of, so I'm, you know, it, it's still touch and go. But writing I do, writing I do well. Um, uh, and it's like, no, sometimes you, you, just, you just pause for a moment and you think like, you know, like this is your life, Dre, and it is ending like one fucking day at a time. Like, you know, we are dying. We're all fucking dying, right? So it's like just, you know, and it's all about that little line. You know, it's all about that fucking dash. That dash is very important. The next time you look at, I didn't, I didn't make, I didn't invent that saying. I heard it somewhere many years ago. I kind of liked it, like live your dash, because I, I thought it sounded really cool. Uh, it's not my saying. I didn't, I didn't come up with it. But that's what it's all about, you know, live your dash, make it as, as good and interesting and do it your way, you know, don't, don't follow anybody else's bullshit, just, yeah, do your own thing. <laughs> okay, I'm fucking dizzy. Yeah. <laughs> that's enough of that, oh, holy shit. And another thing, I find it pretty fucking disconcerting that only a few of us are really interested in changing things. The rest seem fucking content to move backwards into the future. Now I get asked a lot if I was gonna if I was gonna talk about politics in this thing. No, I'm not. Another question I get a lot is, oh, if I was a member of a political party, what what political party would I be in? Only once will I mention it.
when they tell you not to sing. Has anyone called you beautiful today? Have you seen the exploding stars in your smile? Or are they already black holes when greeted by a mirror? Are you tall enough to reach your reflection? Or do the crushing boot heels keep you too close to the ground to reach? Did they tell you that your face is impossible? Did they tell you not to sing? Did they tell you that you belong as close to the ground as you can get? Did you believe them? Did they rock and lull you with distractions? Or did they stone you into silence so that you no longer spoke of your greatness? Has anyone told you that you are a sleeping giant? That you could rumble the earth all the way open if you wake up and stand? Are you trapped inside a nightmare laced with villagers and ropes? Have they named you monster? Do you see the torches coming? Are you yet to discover the might in your fingers? Are you still buried in slumber? Has anyone told you of your majestic glory? Have you heard whispers of possibility in your breath? Have you reveled in the power of your sweetest dreams? Do your teeth have welts? Have they called your prison cocoon? Are you ready to break out? Are they so afraid of you that you have become afraid of yourself? Have they called you clumsy? Have your legs gone numb from the box they've crammed you into? Can you still wiggle your toes? Do they mock your wings? Do they echo the name freak in their flapping? Are you clinging desperate to a branch? Are your feathers atrophied? Have you hardened into stone? Do they treat you like an artifact? Has your sides become an idle exhibit now that you are no longer a threat? Are you still a threat? Are you history or are you making it still? Has anyone told you today that you are still breathing? That you can melt stones into water with a touch? That the sun and moon are sheepish at the sight of you? That the struggle free is what strengthens your wings to carry you forward? I offer you every mirror. Your reflection is in love with you, waiting for you.